What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. How are you doing today? Let us know in the comments down below. So today we have a double feature. Two model cars in one box. This is the 1979 Toyota Mark II Chaser. You can also build this one as a Mark II. Now, the cool thing about this model kit is there's actually two cars in it. So you can build one this way or one that way. And the really cool thing I think is that this almost looks like Toyota kind of copied a Ford Granada. And sort of just made it into a Toyota size kind of car. So anyway, without further ado, let's go down to the bench and open up the lid on our great Toyota Mark II Chaser. Now it's time to go all the way back to 1979, where we can check out this really cool Toyota Chaser Mark II from Aoshima. Now this model kit is really unique because you actually get two cars in the box, which we'll see. So here we've got the Chaser up top and the Mark II down below. Up above, we can see the front and rear view of the Toyota Mark II on this side of the box. And you can see that the Mark II is a little more luxurious in its detailing than the Chaser down below. The Chaser was designed to be the sports car. And again, it does really look like a Ford, sort of either a Mustang or a Granada of the era. On this side of the box, we have a wonderful paint color call out from Mr. Hobby. And now let's lift the lid off this kit and see what's inside. So right away we get our instruction sheet, followed by the decal sheet. Then look at this, all these chrome components, including seats. Now you get two of each part tree in here. So that's so that you can build both cars. We have glass and duplicate glass. We also have bag of tires and springs and little retainers, which Aoshima seems to include in all their kits. And then we've got black molded plastic here, as well as two chassis pans. We have our chrome duplicated again, and our final black component part tree duplicated twice. And then here you get not one, but two car bodies. So I'll clear this out of the way and we'll take a look at what's going on in the instructions. Our first illustration in our instruction sheet is of the Toyota Mark II. And here we can see the top view, the side view, the front view, and the back view. And it shows where all the decal locations are so that you can build an awesome looking model. Our next illustration is of the performance version of this car, which is known as the Chaser. And this was quite a fast car back in the day. It's too bad there wasn't any imported into North America, but apparently this was the hot one to have in Japan. So here we see the top view, the side view, and you get these nice wide decals on here, which is really cool. And then uh, there's the front view with the more simplistic front grille. We've got a Japanese license plate going on the back here as well, and our rear tail lamps, which are different from the Mark II. Panel 1 shows our wheel assemblies going together, and it says you can choose the more favorable one of the three types of wheels. So there you go. It doesn't show the tire and the wheel going together, but it's just assumed that you would push the wheel into the center of the tire, and there you go. So you have these the wheels here, the king pins, you also have your rivet going through the center, and then this hammer here tapping the rivet down. And I love the hammer illustration they use. It looks like this, <laughs> like you're going to use this kind of hammer. That's my big rubber mallet, which looks like the hammer of Thor going in to punch in these little tiny rivets. So I would suggest something smaller. Step two shows the chassis going together. So here you have these coil springs, which will go on the long shaft down here, the king pin. And then your wheels go through that and into the little hole here. And then you've got your rack and pinion steering going across, which links in here. So this little hook will hook onto this pin here. And remember, right and left hand side are going to be different so that they line up right and left with these being at the back. Panel three completes our front end assembly with the lower A arms, the transmission brace going across here, 
as well as these support rods up front and a splash pan. And then in the back it shows to push these strange pins up through the bottom. And again it looks like a car set up for an electric motor, much like the Nissan Cedric that I reviewed last time. So here in panel 5 we see the rear tire going in through the back of the chassis. And I was correct, this is set up for an electric motor, which doesn't come in the kit, but you could always add one in. So there'd be a little gear on the end of the motor shaft, and that would click up in here and go underneath on the wheel arch here. And then where this spacer is, there'd be a bigger gear, much like how a slot car is set up, actually. And then there would be a spacer here, and the metal axle going through with another spacer and the rear tire. And over here in panel 6, this is the spring mechanism going in that holds that engine in, or the rear axle or something. So those plastic pins we shoved in before, they actually have retainer clips which pop on the top. And then just by studying this, you can see how it all goes together. There is a little cross brace here. And that is what it will look like once it's all assembled. Panel 7 shows the undercarriage being set up. So what we have here is radius rods up front. These are little towing hooks which glue into the front and the back. And then we have our drive shaft right in here, and you can see it is a split drive shaft. It's actually two together with a universal in the center, as well as universals on the edge. And then it's got the independent rear suspension in the back, which would make the axle go up and down, much like a Corvette. So you can see why this was a popular car back in the day. There's our fuel cell, as well as our exhaust system and mufflers with the little tailpipe extension. Panel 8 shows the front end of our suspension going together. And this again is a battery box with a little tiny peg right in here, which interlocks in with the rack and pinion steering, so you can steer your wheels and it'll stay in place. And we have the two screws going down into those columns there. And then we've got this little panel which is used for the pedals, which glues right in here floor pedals. Panel 9 shows our interior assembly with our dashboard. Take a look at this. This is a multi-piece dashboard. You've got a top and a bottom. The gauges come in through the back. Steering console and steering wheel. You get a choice of the stock version or the custom. And then here, look at all this little stuff underneath. It's like CB radios and heater vents and everything else. And then once you got your dashboard complete, it glues down into here. There's those floor pedals going on to here. You also have your two-piece bucket seats and something here for the center console, I believe. And then we've got our rear seat and we also have our rear package shelf with big Kenworth speakers. And you have the option of adding in these bucket seats. You got a center console with a gear shift lever and a parking brake lever. Now if you want to build the interior for the Chaser, this is how it looks. It's very much the same as the Mark II, only the differences are in the paint colors. Panel 10 completes our interior of the Chaser and Mark II by adding in the door panels in here, as well as the glass. And you'll note that the Mark II has a little tab in here for the rear view mirror, and the Chaser does not. Although the Chaser also needs a rear view mirror, so I don't know why they didn't just duplicate the glass. Maybe they did. We'll take a look at the plastic parts. But basically it says to do all this and cut out those center posts again so that the glass fits in. Panel 11 shows the build-up for the Mark II. So here we have our windshield wipers going into the little holes on the cowl. We also have our rear view mirrors being mounted up on the front fenders. You could also move these to the back if you want to locate them like a North American car. Although I guess since this never arrived in North America, you would not do that. <laughs> Here we have our headlights, and remember north and south, east and west on that pattern. Glue them in here, and then we've got headlight shrouds which go in. We also have the grill going into the center, the bumper, the turn signal parking lights, as well as the front splash apron, and then the aluminum license plate and the decal license plate. And here we also have the side marker lights which go into there and how to paint them. Now when you build the Chaser, which is really awesome that they give you both models in this kit instead of your choice of one or the other, you add in the build assembly the same way. So starting with your windshield wipers going into the cowl, the mirrors going up on the fenders, headlights, headlight shrouds. The difference is the grill. And it shows you here how to paint it up. And then you've got your front bumper again, your turn signal parking lights, and the apron, 
and then the license plates. And there it also shows how to paint the little marker lights. And of course they are, I think they're a bit different than the Mark II. No, they're the same. But anyway, that's all how it is done. Panel 12 shows us the rear end assembly for both the Mark II on this side and the Chaser on this side. And remember, these are different rear ends molded into the body. That's why they give you both kits in this one. So what we have here is the rear stop lights, and you get a clear plastic one in the back, followed by a chrome shroud popping in there, and then the center shroud in here, as well as the rear license plate the rear bumper and the splash apron underneath. Then on the chaser, you get a different back end. This has got a longer bridge across the top here, and it tells you how to paint in the ditch and the letters on there, as well as the tail lamps. So again, you can see just how different that is. Bumper is the same as is the splash pan on the back, and there's our license plate right there. Panel 13 shows the body going in place. Remember you first tilt in the front end and it locks on these tabs here, which are going to a groove on the inside of the body. And then you fold this back and slightly bend the chassis a bit and lock it in place down below. Aoshima also includes this nice parts list on the back of the instruction sheet showing you all the parts you're going to use and the grayed out ones are the parts you're not going to use. What's interesting is they show both parts trees and they limit what goes on which and uh, what doesn't go on which car. Here we have the two bodies that are included in the kit, one being for the Mark II on top and the second being for the Chaser down below. And when I first looked at these I thought it was only the rear panels that are different. But now looking at it again, I actually see that the side panels are different. So we're going to take a look at that in just a sec here. First off, let's take a look at the Mark II. And we're going to keep in mind what I'm saying here when I go through this. So to start with, we've got the front end of the car. And again, it is quite deeply molded in here, which I do believe, like with some of these, that you can actually put a little LED along here and have the wires coming in and that would be part of the electrical system and same with the front headlights. Now if you look at the Mark II along the side, and keep this in mind, you'll see a panel line that goes all the way along the door and down into here and then it's got that coke bottle shape kicking up into here. Now this body also has the Mark II Grand molded in place right there as a script. And then along the back you've got those vertical type tail lights with the little script right in here as well as the holder for a license plate and then the back panel for the bumper and all of that. Again really nicely done. You got your side marker, whoops, side marker lights right here and then the emblem up in here. And you'll note the roof the glass comes right across the top and so on and so forth. We also have the nice little area here. <laughs> the cowl up here and that's where your windshield wipers are going to mount. Now these have to be clipped out and I don't know why they're included in here, why the mold process had them. There's a seam line that runs up in here which you can remove easily with the number 16 hobby blade. And overall, that is what the Mark II looks like. So now let's move that out of the way and grab our chaser body. There. Now you'll note here on the side that the body panel only goes from just in front of the door handle and out to the front of the car. It doesn't sweep all the way back down in here like on the Mark II. The glass, the rear window actually kicks up and in into this neat little shape. It's just up there. I can't really do it too much justice with the camera, but you can really see it when you're looking at it. Then you've got the chaser emblem in here. And I do believe that side molding is also a bit different. Uh, maybe not. <clears throat> then in the back you've got the horizontal tail lights going in with SGS stamped right in there. And again the rear panel for the light, for the uh, bumper mounting in. The front again has the nice little slots for the parking signals and the headlights. And now taking a look at that, oh they are pretty much the same in the front. 
but yeah, it's definitely the side and the back that are different. So again, looking at that panel line, just comes out here, but on here it's all the way up there. On the Mark II, oh, and the Mark II also has that little emblem right there, whereas the Chaser does not. So again, it's really quite cool to see the differences between the two body styles, and I'm really thankful that Aoshima is allowing us to build both cars in one box. Next up we have the chassis, and I'm only going to show one because they're identical. So here we've got our Toyota engine sitting in there. We also have our unibody subframes and the rear axle, which looks really tiny, but I think they did that because you got the metal axles going through for your rear wheels. But take a look at that nice detail on the panels underneath. Really cool looking stuff. The engine is nicely molded in here, even though it's not separate. And up, if we turn this over, you can see all the different drive shaft assemblies and whatever. There's our floor pan in here. There are mold marks which you might need to remove, but what I do first is put the interior in and see if you need to remove the mold marks, see if any of that covers them over. Now, unlike the Cedric, there's nothing in the engine bay to show if you cut the uh, hood open. So again, you'll have to construct that up all out of your own imagination by looking at real pictures of the Toyota and using something like Evergreen Sheet Styrene. This parts tree includes all the black components for our model kit. We have the battery box. There was that little tab there that locks into our rack and pinion steering. We have our differential, our exhaust system, as well as the front suspension. And we have the rear suspension here. I've got all these little retainer clips, which are pretty cool. There's the front steering and then our dashboard, the gas tank, and the front apron, as well as our pedals and our windshield wipers and many other parts. Let's just bring this up to the camera. There we have our tow clamps as well as the retainer clips. And then take a look at that dashboard. Again, really cool looking stuff. Got the open area for the instruments to poke through. We also have our gas tank here and the front apron. Again, look at the attention to detail. Even though this is a simplistic kit, you sure get a lot on the detail end. Again, really excellent work by Aoshima. Here we have something really cool that I wasn't expecting. We actually have four parts trees that are all different. Now, what we have here is one for either the Mark II or the Chaser. I'm not sure which is which. It will say in the instructions. But we have all these separately molded door panels and uh, the rear package shelf, and then those little bits that go underneath on the dashboard. And um, the thing that's cool here, though, is look at all the wheel options you get. You get these racing style wheels down here, and then the flat disc style racing wheels, as well as two sets of the factory stock wheels. And again, they are really well done. So let's take a look at them up in the camera. Take a look at this parts tree first. Again, you get the flat interior panels, which allow the manufacturer to make a lot of detail in here because it's not trying to go down a tub or something crazy. But look at those wheels. Those are like the ones they used in uh, racing in the States. Can-Am, I believe, is the race. Again, really cool looking stuff on here. Imagine this is a Can-Am car. Um, not quite sure how that would look, but anyway. So again, we get the same interior panels for the other car, but take a look at these wheels. Again, really cool how they're, the slots are actually right through them. They're like a triangle style with four bolt pattern inside. Again, four bolts, Japanese style. Now on the back of these, same as the other ones, there are mold marks around the wheel hubs. So, or the <laughs> outside of the wheel, the rim. So what you want to do is sandpaper those down and clean them up. There are some old marks on the back panels, but that's okay. Look at these little rings. Those are interesting. wonder what that was about. So, at any rate, those are those wheels. And then I'll just bring up one because they're duplicates. But there's the factory wheels, again, with the holes in the back. You can see the little Toyota emblem. So these on the box are painted aluminum. So that's what I would do. Spray them with some testers aluminum or something like that. The paint colors of your choice. And again, these look really great and will be wonderful on your model. Next up, we have our chrome parts trees. 
And remember, this is doubled up, so you're actually getting two complete chrome parts trees, one to build each car. However, everything is on the chrome parts trees. So what we have is both grills for the Mark II and the Chaser. We have chrome-plated seats, which is a really interesting kind of feature. What you could actually do is spray paint silver over top of this for that uh, silver metallic type fabric that they used to have. I don't know if that was actually in this car or not. If you uh, want to do something different, you can always strip this with Easy Off Oven Cleaner or something like that. Simple green, whatever you guys like to use in order to get rid of the chrome. There we have the stock steering wheel and the rally steering wheel, as well as different things like a radio or something here. There's the back panel for the Mark II, I believe. And that would be inserted into the license plate component. We also have another chrome racing seat, but only one. So again, you would take one of these out or whatever you want to do. Or since you got two parts trees, you could do a left and right using this from the other chrome part tree. There's our center console. We also have our taillights. And then here we've got our bumpers and the headlights and the mirrors. So let's just take a look at the detail on here. Again, really cool. Reminds me of old toys from the 70s with chrome. There's the seats again, and here you're sitting right into those wheel arches. So I wonder what that was like, you know, for the passenger in the back. Nine times out of ten, it was just kids back there anyway. But again, look at all that nice detail. Really wonderful work Aoshima does on their parts trees. Turning it over, there are mold marks, so make sure you get rid of them so they don't interfere with you know, fit and finish. Now, unfortunately, there's mold mark right in the center back of the chrome chairs. So you would have to try to fill them in or get rid of them and then chrome plate in here with a Molotol pen or something like that uh, in order to hide that up. But on the custom seat, there's no mold marks. That's really well. Uh, there are underneath here, but you won't see that because that's down below. Your license plate shrouds also have mold marks in the center, which is not the greatest. But anyway, that looks really good to me. Take a look at these bumpers here. Again, those are really nicely done. Beautiful work. I think this would be a really good kit to build and display on your shelf. Well, both cars. So again, you're getting a good bang for your buck with this kit. Next up, we have our glass components for both cars. And as you can see, the Mark II does have that loop right there for the rear view mirror. And I found out where the mirror is for the chaser. It's just right up in this section here. Now, these parts down here look exactly the same to both cars. So I will only bring up one piece of glass. So how about the one for the chaser, since that's the hotter car. Uh, now, right here, we've got the rear defrosters molded into the glass, which look really accurate on here and really nice. There's all the tail lamps and the headlights. Now, remember, you've got that cross pattern, so go north and south, east and west, and not at some weird angle. And then you've got your tail lamps in here, so one going up and down and one across. And it's really good, actually, you get duplicates of the tail lamps and whatnot in case you lose one. You always have one extra parts tree to fall back on. There's those instrument panels again, molded in clear, so you could paint them up or maybe even put an LED behind them so they light up. That would be kind of cool. But yeah, again, really great stuff. I mean, I can't believe the quality that's coming out of this kit. It is so fantastic. Here we have the Pirelli Cinturato P7 tires again. And it seems like these are the favorites of Aoshima. You got taller ones in the back and narrow ones in the front, which we'll take a look at in, the, in a minute. Here we have the wheel retainers, as well as our aluminum license plate shrouds, which is actually good because remember the one on the chrome parts tree had a mold mark right in the center so here you can use these instead and then we've got our bag with our rear axle and our coil springs in it as well as the little bolts and the screws to hold the model together i'm not going to open the bag in case i lose these parts so we'll just move those out of the way and we'll focus on our tires so again we got the wonderful tread pattern 
there is a seam line which runs up the center which you can remove with your tire spinning tool and if you want to know how to do that check out this video right here and uh, then we've got our narrower tires and as you can see they're almost like three quarters uh, the difference between this full tire and this one so again really nice you can see the writing up along the sidewalls and uh, there is a little bit of a web on the inside I'm not sure if you need to remove that to make it hold on the wheel but overall these end up looking really nice on your model and I'm losing my voice here we have our decal sheet for our Mark II and our Chaser. What's interesting is that it doesn't say Chaser in English. It says it in Japanese. Anyway, so again, what's interesting with Aoshima is they give you all these license plates. I'm not really quite sure the, the understanding behind it. But uh, most of the license plates I see from Japan are green letters with a white background. But here they also give you green letters and a transparent background. So you could paint your plate yellow or something like that and put these on instead. You also have it for the Mark II and the Chaser, which is really interesting. Then you get all these little decals in here for scripts and whatnot. As well as these stickers, which I believe go on the windows. And then here you get the SGS for the chaser, that nice decal stripe. So again, really nice looking decals and very colorful. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great unboxing video where I got to show you not one, but two model cars. And that would be the Toyota Mark II and the Toyota Chaser. So I'd like to say which way would you want to build it, but thanks to Aoshima, you can actually build both versions. So that is always cool. And if you built this model in the past, please let us know how you enjoyed it in the comment section down below. Also consider becoming a member of this channel for as little as $3 a month. You can help us grow financially quite well so that we can get some more model cars to unbox and many other things like maybe some new equipment, maybe a new curtain behind me, something like that. And if you're looking for model cars, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca in our automotive section where you will find all kinds of cars from all over the world, including Japan. So until next time, everybody, happy model building, keep the glue and plastic flying, and we'll see you in the next video.